Okay, so we're jumping in. Talking about carbohydrates today. The base unit of so many foods that I love. This is the first video of a three-part mini-series on the fundamentals of a triathlete's diet. The other two parts will cover protein and fat, but today is about the sugary goodness that is carbs. After we've gone through a bit of the sciencey stuff, I'll give you three tips in relation to carbohydrates which you can use to help your training and performance. So let's get started. All right, so as I mentioned on the first video I posted, we're gonna go over some of the science behind nutrition and I'm gonna break it down for you so that you can actually understand what you're eating and how it's gonna impact on your performance. Now I get that you might just be here for the tips, but if you want to learn something that you can then use to apply it in different situations, stick with me. Give me five minutes and I'll go over carbohydrates, how they work and how you can use that to your advantage. Cool, and go. Okay, so what do triathletes actually need to know about carbohydrates and how they work? To start with, carbohydrate in a nutritional sense means sugar. It's important not to think of sugar just as that lovely, sweet, tasty thing that makes brownies and other foods taste so good, but just as a form of basic energy currency. There are many different forms of sugars, but as triathletes, it makes sense to focus on the three which are predominant and most important to us. These are glucose, and if you see it called dextrose, it's essentially the same thing, fructose and glycogen. They all have different roles to play and we'll cover off how to use them to our advantage. Glucose and fructose molecules can exist on their own. So by that I mean they don't have to be linked or bonded to any other glucose or fructose molecule. If you've ever heard of simple sugars, this is what it's referring to. Simple sugars are more easily available to use as energy because they're not chained up or only to one other molecule. So we can access energy through them a lot quicker and easier. Glucose molecules can also join up with other glucose molecules and form a bond. Imagine a linking chain. When this bond continues, it's called glycogen in animals, which includes us, humans. So when I talk about your body's glycogen stores, I'm referring to those glucose molecules stored up and linked in that big chain. In plants, that same chain is called starch. So these are your complex carbohydrates. Because they're all chained and linked, it makes it a bit harder to access the energy when we eat them. We can, it just takes a little bit longer than the simple ones. Fructose can bond with a glucose molecule to make sucrose, and that's table sugar, but we don't really have any big long chains to worry about there, like glycogen. Now, how does this help? Firstly, let's take glucose. In terms of energy production, glucose is the sugar that we care about. It's the sugar that your body uses through some complex processes to create energy. When we have excess sugar in our diet, our body can store it as glycogen, or if our glycogen stores are topped up, store it as fat, to be used at a later time for energy. This includes during exercise, but also just our day-to-day -day activities, walking around, breathing, living. In a rested, full state, we've got about 2,000 to 2,500 calories worth of glycogen stored in our muscles and in our liver. And this equates to about 90 minutes of hard exercise. This becomes important later on, so just keep that in mind. Fructose is also super important, but it's a bit different to glucose. Your body can do some fancy things and change it into glucose to be used for energy. And it does do that, but it's easily converted into glycogen. So it helps to top up our stores, especially in the liver. Still with me? All right, the next thing to know is how and when our body uses carbohydrates. Now we know from lab experiments that when we're resting, we use about 50% carbohydrates and 50% fat to generate our energy needs. If you've ever seen a VO2 max test on YouTube, you'll see the participant wearing a mask over their face. And I put this photo of me doing one in the lab in my intro video. And I know it's a shame I don't have any fancy slow-mo footage to wow you with, but because of coronavirus, the labs are closed. So once things ease off a bit, I'll bring you some footage. Anyway, those tests give you a lot of data, but one of the most important things is that it tells you what source you're using to create energy, fat 
or carbohydrate. By the way, protein isn't really featured because as far as energy production goes, it's only a very small proportion, so it's not really important. Now, usually, we're using a mix of carbohydrates and fats, and this just fluctuates depending on our energy demands at the time. Now, one thing we know from these experiments is that our body shifts the main source of fuel to carbohydrates until the point that we're working hard enough that we only use carbohydrates, no fat. Why is this, I hear you ask? The answer in a basic sense is that it's more efficient or easier to use carbohydrates. Fat is a tremendous source of energy, but it's a bit more difficult or time consuming to use. For the same amount of oxygen, fat gives us less energy. Or if you look at it a different way, we have to use more oxygen to get the same amount of energy from fat as we would from an equivalent of carbohydrate. So our body does the sensible thing and just swaps to using carbohydrates. Also, to be able to create energy from fat, we have to have oxygen. But the same isn't true for carbohydrates. We'll cover it at a later date, but when we work anaerobically, so without oxygen, think high intensity, we have to use carbohydrates. The other thing to say is that generally, it takes anywhere between 24 and 72 hours to refill or top up our glycogen stores. Now I know there is a reasonable amount of information to take in there. So just take a moment and think about what the implications might be of differences in intensity, frequency, or duration of exercise in a nutritional sense. How does that affect us? Mm. Don't mind me. How do I do for time? Yeah, pretty good. All right, cool. Ready? Let's move on to my tips, which just tie it all in together. Now, just in case any of you are jumping a couple of episodes ahead and want to talk about burning fat or fat in your diet, slow down. These are going to be general, but important tips focused on carbohydrates, which will get you not only thinking about it properly, but help you to train, recover and race better. Yes, there are other possible things you could try, like low carb, high fat diets. And we'll talk about that in future videos, but there's a much bigger margin to go wrong with those kind of things. So unless you've been advised by a nutritionist or you've got a specific plan tailored for you, follow my tips on carbohydrates and watch my fat episode in a week or so. Shameless. And I can promise you, you'll be on your way to some better training and racing while keeping healthy and reducing the risk of injury and illness. Tip number one, fuel your hard workouts. So as I mentioned, when we start working harder, we shift our use to carbohydrates and stop using fat. That means if you're gonna go to nasty town, you're gonna need some carbohydrates to fuel you. If we have a good carbohydrate meal before we exercise, we help to top up our body's glycogen stores and that gives us the best chance to perform and work harder. We also know that when we're in a fed state, it makes it easier mentally. So basically, you feel better, so you can work harder, so you feel worse. Great, hey? Now, can you get away with not eating before a hard workout? Yep, sure you can. And is it wrong? No, not specifically. We'll talk about it more when we go over fasted training, but it's definitely harder mentally and physically on your body. So I wouldn't generally advise it. You can experiment with what works well for you, but you want to aim to eat a couple of hours before you exercise. If you've got a good amount of time, say three to four hours, you can have a good balanced meal full of carbohydrates, wholemeal breads, pastas, oats, fruits and vegetables, all of that kind of thing. Only got a short time before you work out? Have something a bit smaller, which is easier to digest. This might be sports drinks or gels or something like a piece of bread or toast with a simple source of sugar like jam or honey. As an addition to this, you want to keep the simple sources of sugars just around your times of training. So before, during or after. Too much of it, like most things, isn't good for us. As triathletes and healthy humans, we want to be eating whole grain sources of carbohydrates for the majority of the time. Tip number two, 
consider your training plan and recover properly nutritionally between your sessions. If you're just doing easy sessions, they're spaced out or your volume is low, then you don't need to worry as much. But as triathletes, we're notorious for pushing ourselves, often training two or three times a day. But keep in mind the two main principles that we've been over. If you've had a hard session, bear in mind that that will have used up a lot of your glycogen reserves. And if you're planning on then training again the same day, you've got to make sure you've got enough fuel for it. If you're training frequently, you're always going to be fighting to keep your stores of glycogen topped up. Remember that it takes 24 to 72 hours to replenish these stores, and we're going to be using carbohydrates even when the exercise is easy. Current research suggests that in the hour after training, your body can really benefit from simple sources of carbohydrates to help replenish your glycogen stores. So consider something like a recovery shake after a hard workout. There are plenty of branded ones out there as recovery mixes, but you can also just as easily make your own. Combine some berries, a banana, oats, and if you have it, maltodextrin. As a tip inside a tip, generous, eh? You'll get good value for your time here, I promise. Maltodextrin is a great supplement to have. It's basically just glucose in a powder form, and you'll find it in lots of different energy gels or drinks. You can just buy some maltodextrin powder and it's pretty cheap for a big bag and then just mix it with some juice or in a shake and voila you've got a much cheaper carbohydrate drink which nutritionally does the same thing in the hour or so after your snack just have a normal good nutritious meal with all of the stuff you'd normally have which brings me on to tip number three that's one which brings me on to tip number three don't be afraid to eat a lot great stuff huh that's my tip eat a lot. Nice one, James. But yeah, triathletes train a lot and often pretty hard, but there's often a stigma attached to food, carbohydrates, weight, overeating. The truth is that when your body is under that kind of stress, it really needs the food, along with the basic idea that we all need a certain amount of calories just to function. We then have to add in the adaption process, all of the stress that we put our body under. So we need to make sure we have enough calories for that and carbohydrates plays a big part. Whole grain sources of carbohydrates and fruits and vegetables are packed full of things which are really helpful for our body. So things like fiber, antioxidants, and these are really important just for the day-to-day -day functioning of our body. The fact that we train so much and often it's hard exercise makes it really easy to under eat. But if you don't eat enough, you run the risk of all of the things that we now know are tied into undernutrition. Injuries such as stress fractures, upset to your hormones, including your sex hormones, overreaching or overtraining syndrome. You'll also be at a higher risk of common illnesses like respiratory tract infections, which will then just keep you out of training. So on a lighter note, go and eat some food. If you found this video useful, then give it a like and I'd love it if you dropped me a comment if you found it interesting or if you had a question. And click subscribe if you want to keep updated and notified about my upcoming videos because they'll be good. And I'll catch you next time. See ya.